Well guys, as most of you know, I am not perfect. Um, I make mistakes and I can honestly say this is the first time that this has happened to me, but uh, stay tuned if you wanna find out what I did. Hey guys, it's me Kay and you've arrived at my weird little corner of the internet. Welcome. If you're new here, I am a part-time reseller, mostly on eBay these days, and today I have a thrift haul for you. So this is actually from a couple Fridays ago. By the time you're watching this video, um, it's like six days after I thrifted it at this point when I'm filming. But I need to go and return one of these items before the exchange uh, period has lapsed. So let's hop into that first. So some backstory. I'm in the thrift store. It's a Friday after work on a weekend that I have my daughter. So I was in a rush to get home. Um, I actually got home right on time for when she gets dropped off by her dad. So I was under the gun, closing in on the time that I would have to leave the store to get home on time. It's like eight to 10 minutes from my house depending on traffic. And I flew through the bag section really quickly. Well, I saw this nice Kate Spade tote. The leather feels really nice. Um, I didn't honestly think anything of it. I took a look at the nameplate just to make sure that all the letters were aligned. Um, I threw it in my cart, checked out, came home. Well, when I got home, I think the next day I was looking at it to try and find, you know, the style so I could get it listed. Well, I never looked at the inside in the store and that probably should have been my first red flag but it's just plain and the lining you guys obviously can't feel it but it just feels and even sounds so incredibly cheap um, I also couldn't find anything inside that said the bag was from Kate Spade that was another red flag um, to be fair I have only ever picked up one fake bag and it was on purpose. I found a fake Louis Vuitton at the bins um, and I took it home just so that I could study and kind of learn what to look for um, and how to determine fake or real if I ever get so lucky to come across another Louis Vuitton. Um, I didn't resell it, I just donated it. Actually, I think I threw it in the trash because it was just a trashed bag anyways, but it was a great learning experiment for me. Um, I would not have picked up this bag if I knew it was fake. Um, now that I know, I'm gonna return it. But um, so, like I said, I checked the nameplate to make sure the letters aligned. So they look like they're in the correct alignment for a real Kate Spade bag. And it felt really nice. Well, this thing comes right off. That's red flag number three. Um, it's just like cheaply made metal with these little, like, I don't know, tongs on the end. And underneath it is like a really wonky Kate Spade embossing. I honestly considered for like half a second that maybe it was just an older style or I don't know, something like that because the leather felt pretty good or what I assumed to be leather, but I couldn't find a style. Like I said, couldn't find anything inside. So just for peace of mind, I posted it in my Poshmark Thrifters group on Facebook and they confirmed my suspicions that it is indeed a fake. So I paid $10 for this, which would have been a great price if it had turned out to be a real Kate Spade. But um, like I said, it's going back to the store today as soon as I'm done filming this video. I guess it happens. Uh, this is a first time for everything. I will make sure going forward that I thoroughly inspect uh, any items that I pick up, especially bags, but at least now with you know the pandemic and everything, the exchange policy at my local savers is a little bit better than it was previously. So that's the silver lining to this, but if this has ever happened to you before, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but uh, you know, it is what it is, cost of doing business, but let's move on to more positive things. So I think in total I spent uh, a little over $100, like 110, somewhere around there, and I got close to 30 items. 
so it worked out to under five dollars an item i think it's four dollars and change uh so that's great i love to stay under five dollars the cheaper the better so the first thing i'm going to show you is this large it's marble it's heavy um and it's cold to the touch it's like a charcuterie cheese board i guess you could use it for cutting too if you want on the back it has little feet I believe they priced this at $5.99 and this is gonna go straight to my antique booth. All right, I got a little basket of plush. The basket is staying with me. I'm trying to replace all of the dollar store plastic baskets in my bathroom closet because I don't want anything plastic around in my house if I can help it. So a thrifted wicker basket is better. Anyways, inside are four Disney beanbag plushies. I'll show each one of them to you individually. Um, they did come in, you know, one of those little plastic bags hanging on the wall. I believe it was $5.99 or something. So they do smell a little musty. I'm just gonna hit them with some Febreze because uh, they have the tag so I can't wash them. But here is Geppetto from Pinocchio. I believe that's who this is. Come on camera, focus for me. There he is. All right, they're all beanbag plushes. The retail is only six bucks, but I'll probably lot these up. I have a couple more that I've found on different days um, for my auction next week, or it could have already happened depending on when I put this video up. Um, anyways, this one is Dale from Chip and Dale. The way I remember, I mean, it says on the tag, but the way I remember it is Chip has a brown nose like a chocolate chip. So Dale's the one with the red nose. This one was $7 retail. Next we have referee Mickey with his little whistle. There is a little bit of wear on his whistle here. It's like peeling a little bit, but he's still in good shape otherwise. Also $6. And last but not least, we have Valentine's Mickey with his box of chocolates. This one does have some wear too. I think it's supposed to be stitched closer to his vest like this, um, but that stitch has come undone, but it would be an easy fix for someone who can sew. And again, this one was $6 retail. Let's stick with the plush theme. Next, I have this cute little, well, it's not little, it's kind of medium sized, um, orca whale. There were no tags on here except for this one, which says Steiff. Steiff, if you didn't know, is a German company. I sold a bear from Steiff a few months ago in 2021 that had been mine since I was a kid. Um, and it sold for, I wanna say 30 to 35. I did try to look him up, but I couldn't find any Steiff whale or orca plushes. So. I don't know what to price this guy at, but I'm thinking around 30 to $35 to start and see how that goes, but he's in pretty good shape. I'm not sure if he's vintage. I don't know if Steiff still makes plush and there's no date on here, but it does have the website on the back, so I'm guessing he's not vintage. All right, next. These two were in another um, bag on the wall of bags in the toy section. Uh, there was a third one, but I'm just gonna redonate that. Uh, but this one is a little Aurora penguin on a keychain. He's super cute. I didn't look up comps for him. I got it for one of the other plushes in the bag. And this is that plush. Look how freaking cute this thing is. I had never seen something like this before. I didn't know if he was like some little monster from something. I, he's made by Funko, first of all, so that's usually a good sign. Funko makes some really great plushes that do super well on eBay. And he's from Wetmore Forest, which I had never heard of before. Um, and I looked him up and his name is Smoots. I don't know, but I just think he's totally adorable, little monster guy, and I couldn't find any comps on this character, but some of the other characters are pretty promising um, on eBay, around $25 to $30, and this bag was only priced at $2.99, 
Plus I had 20% off of everything in this haul. So uh, $2.99 for these two plushes, I'm definitely gonna make my money back. Okay, I think that's all I have for plushes. Let's get into some other hard goods before I get into the few items of clothing. Ooh. Um, this is for me, it's just a five pound uh, kettlebell. It's like bean bag with a neoprene outer and like a stiff handle. So this is gonna be for me. And we have another item for me. This is a little, let me turn them on. This is a little solar ghost light. He's so cute. Um, I don't know where he's made. It says manufactured March 2019 is solar decor. I'm gonna guess he was probably like a Target dollar spot or something similar, but I love Halloween. It's the best holiday ever, so he's staying with me. And now that I've started, well at least I did my first one, live auction, and I have the antique booth now, I'm trying to pick up some more vintage hard goods. So I've never tried this brand before, but the comps looked decent on eBay. So this is Enarco Japan. Hopefully you can see that on the little sticker. And it definitely needs a good wash because it's pretty dirty, but look how adorable. It's like a little 70s style planter. It's teeny tiny, but if nobody wants this, um, I will keep it for myself and put a little plant in here because it's totally cute. All right, next was probably a bad buy, but um, I like to try new stuff and see how it goes. This is from Anthropology. It was $14 and it's a little H wall hanging with some patchwork fabric. It's very soft with a hard back and it does have the two little hangers here. Um, this was like five bucks I think, but I mean, I don't think I'll even probably get 14, but I just really wanted to try it out and see how it does. Okay, next we have a little figurine. Again, I am trying to branch out and away from clothing. Um, this one's from 1996. Uh, made by Inesco. It's called Little One to Lean On. How cute is this? I love it. Perfect little southwestern piece. It's a mama carrying her teeny tiny baby. And look at that turquoise wool. Love it. Um, I think maybe like 15 to 20 on this, but it was pretty inexpensive. All right, these are probably gonna go into my booth, but I might actually be able to make more if I listed them on eBay, but they are heavy and I don't wanna try to ship them. So they are brass bookends that are actually books. I assume they go this way, so you could put them next to the books. Um, but these are super cool. I don't think they had any markings on them. None that I can see. Um, and they were marked as $7.99 for the pair, and I'm probably gonna price them around $30 in my antique booth. Okay, I think this is the last hard good. Um, if there's anything else, it's buried under clothes, but I love this piece. I immediately snatched it and put it in my cart. It's a howling wolf and he has the sweetest little southwestern print bandana. Um, he does have a little chip here in his paw. There it is. And there's no markings on him. He's just made out of wood and he's totally cute. I couldn't find any comps on eBay for this. Not that I would really try to ship it anyway. He is going to my booth as well, but oh man, he is cute. And I can't wait to style him in my booth and take a photo for my booth's Instagram page. 
All right, a couple pairs of shoes, literally a couple. I only got two. Um, these were priced up quite a bit, but I still figured I'd take the chance. This is only my second time finding them, but these are Mahabis. I believe that's how you say it. These are from their summer collection, and they are like a white slip-on. I don't know if these count as slippers, and they don't have the removable soles. Uh, the last pair of slippers I sold did have the removable soles, but um, they are in pretty good shape. The bottoms are quite dirty, but um, otherwise they look good, and I don't know, I think, yeah, size US 5 to 6, they're a Euro size 36, so a smaller size, but I have a hard time passing up brands that I don't find too often, so I think these were like $10 minus the 20%. The only other pair of shoes I found that was a decent price are these pair of Merrells. I don't know what the style is or when they are from, but they kind of look like a little flat Mary Jane in the they do have Vibram soles, which are in excellent shape. I don't even know if these were really ever worn. Maybe once, maybe just tried on. There's like one teeny tiny pebble stuck in the bottom of this tread, but otherwise they're in amazing shape. Um, and it just fell out because <laughs> I felt it drop on my hand. Um, so they are a size US 7, and it doesn't say the style name, but... I think they had these priced at $3.99, surprisingly enough, so I had to grab these. All right, I also have two bags, and then we will finish off with the clothes. So the first bag is this Market Tote from the New Yorker magazine. These do pretty well on eBay, even just the plain ones that have the New Yorker logo. This one has like a little monster guy. I tried to look it up. Um, while I was in the store, but I couldn't find anything with this character on it So I'm not sure if it was a special limited edition or something But uh, I think this was like two or three dollars and it could bring me around 25 to 30 bucks So happy to try that out and the other bag that I got is a La Sports sack I'm a little bit pickier with these these days um, I used to just pick them up every time I'd find them, but this one is in pretty good condition and it's a bigger size. It also has these zippers on the side to expand it a little bit more for your stuff. Um, the inside is in excellent condition as well and it's very nice and neon colored. I don't know the style of this one, but these do pretty well for me and they usually move pretty quickly as well. All right, last but not least, the clothing portion of this haul. Um, so not too many things. I mean, this is all the clothing that I got and I was in the store for a couple hours. So this first brand, I've only sold once before. Um, I own a pair for myself, but I found a, uh, one piece at the bins like forever ago and sold it. Um, they feel really nice. These are a size medium as far as I could tell the size is kind of worn off but this is Nux it's N-U-X if that's not coming across because it is a bit faded but these are just a plain black legging um, and they only had these priced at $3.99 so happy to pick those up and if nobody wants them I'll just keep them for myself this brand I had never found before um, comps looked a little bit worse than what I kind of thought in my brain when I uh, heard about this brand in the past, but uh, we'll see. This is Scotch and Soda. It's a size medium. I can't remember what this word says. It's really hard to read. I think it's B-L-A-U-W. Um, I'm not sure if that means something in um, Dutch because this is like a made in Amsterdam, I believe. Yep. Um, so if you know what it means, let me know. And if I Google it before this video goes up, I will leave it on the screen. But it is just like this pullover sweatshirt with a little collar. The collar is like a chambray material and the neck does zip a little bit. But super cute. Happy to try that out. This I think was only $4.99, which is a great price um, for Peloton. Peloton gear does really well. It usually moves pretty quickly for me. Um, and this one is like a little sweatshirt. Again, it says Peloton, 
spelled out on the sleeve and it does have like a little mock neck with the drawstring so uh, here's the peloton logo if you ever come across it in a thrift store but um, these can do pretty well i might be able to squeeze 40 to 45 out of this all right so next we have a men's piece and it's only the second time i've ever found this brand actually previously found it in this same thrift store and actually just sold it last week it was a pair of shoes they sold full price for eighty dollars some guy came in said i want those he purchased them outright um my posture va didn't even have time to send him an offer and i have it set at five minutes so he came and bought them he already left me a five star rating so happy about that um curious to see how this will do this is a clothing piece here is the label john varvados I know I've heard Jack and Ryan on Jack Valentine's channel talk about this brand before, um, and I think they sent it to the Real Real. But when I checked last, it wasn't on their list, so I don't know if it's one of those where if you send it in with some other stuff, they might take it. But I'll just try to sell this on my own and see how it does. But it's just a short sleeve pocket tee. Here's a little pocket. It's kind of like a marled space dye like pinky purple color so it's a size medium we'll see how that goes i didn't look up comps i kind of just grabbed it and went all right so this next piece is mine uh, y'all ain't getting it <laughs> if you want it it's a size small i'm praying that it fits me but uh last summer i took livy to montana and wyoming we went to see grand teton and yellowstone national parks while we were in yellowstone i got this really cool like dip dye tie dye hoodie it was like ninety dollars um i don't know why i spent that much i've worn it maybe twice because i'm like ocd about spilling anything on it or washing it and the colors run on something else so i only wear it <laughs> on very rare occasion but i love it um and i didn't really get anything in jackson hole wyoming which was the better location um town wise uh because if you haven't been to jackson hole it's just it's very vibey but um yellowstone national park was better but uh this is a jackson hole sweatshirt it's just got a little small thing up there and then the back has the bigger graphic yellow isn't especially not this like mustardy color it's not really my color but um i'm happy to pick this up and i believe it was five dollars minus the 20 percent so score for me apologies if the lighting's changed um it's like five ish right now p.m so is the sun starting to set on this side of my house um this is a vintage single stitch polo ralph lauren I think I'm going to throw this in with some other shirts for my live auction. It is a size medium. Here is the sleeve with the single stitch. Um, it does show some wash wear, but for vintage, I'll still pick it up. And it's just a short sleeve, like Kelly green pocket tee with the logo embroidered on the pocket. All right, and last piece for this haul. I didn't recognize the tag, but the print looked very familiar. Um, and I thought it was the mountain, but then when I saw the tag inside, it says it's split, so you're not gonna be able to see it. But it says Quail Hollow on the brand tag. Had never heard of it, it's a size large. But this print, is totally something the mountain would have so i looked a little bit closer at the image and then finally i saw it at the bottom the mountain this is from 2011 so it's not vintage and i don't even know what this creature is if you know tell me in the comments i wasn't sure if it was like a chihuahua or a, a meerkat i don't know but these do really well for me i have an almost 100 percent sell-through rate i just have one left in my closet and two after i get that listed um so i love picking up that brand it doesn't sell for a whole lot but they generally flip really fast for me so i'm happy to pick them up and also i really just love the cool graphics i own one myself i think i've worn it in a video here it's like a rastafarian lion uh he's pretty cool and that's probably never leaving my collection but 
Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really, really helps me out here on YouTube to know what type of content you enjoy seeing from me. Pretty soon in the next few videos, I have um, a quarter two goals update video coming out. I have a thread up shoe box. Yes, another one on its way to my house. It shipped last night at like midnight. Um, so we'll see how long it takes to get that. Um, but other than that, if there's anything you want to see, you want to see me try out a box or a service, just let me know in the comments. I'm always responsive to comments. Uh, I love seeing them. It lets me know that you guys are enjoying what I'm putting out there for you. Um, and if you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you here in my little weirdo family on the internet, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!